Good morning, everybody. Apologies for the, the absentness the past couple of days. I have been sick with what I believe was the flu. Still feeling a little bit sick, so this will probably be a little bit of a shorter video today. But something that I wanna do is go ahead and tear apart our 13B. Over the past three days that I've been sick, I've been literally laying on the couch, watching Rob Dom videos, Vargas Brother videos, all these videos showing me how to tear apart and rebuild the 13B. It really doesn't look too bad. Now there's a couple things that I'm gonna mention now when we go to rebuild this 13B, we are gonna be using a stock Mazda flywheel because it does have a built-in counterweight to it. I don't plan on going to the extent of rebalancing the engine. We're just gonna reuse the counterweights that are on the engine currently and rebuild and reseal everything else. I don't, I, I just want the RX-7 to be a fun little street car. I don't want it to be a powerhouse. I have the WRX as a powerhouse. I have the STI as a powerhouse. The Mazda, I just want it to be a fun little street car I can enjoy. Even if it only makes like 350 horsepower, I'm totally cool with that. So. Let me kind of walk you through what I believe is the correct way to tear apart a 13B. If I'm wrong, you guys can yell at me. If I'm right, you can agree with me. I don't quite know, but we're gonna figure this out together. So with our 13B here, before I can even put this thing on an engine stand, I know we need to take off the front cover here, which I believe there's some oil pan bolts that run along the front cover that we're gonna have to take off also. Once the front cover is off, there is a gear in here for the oil pump, counterweight, a shim, and I think a couple other things. I am extensively going to film the process of disassembling this because I am going to use this video when it comes to reassembly so that way I can backtrack everything. Let's get to town disassembling the front cover here. Once the front cover's off we can get this thing on an engine stand. Uh, put it right up there. I think the best way to put this thing on an engine stand is off of these two front holes on the iron. It's a little bit different trying to get this thing on an engine stand. I see people with like specially made engine stand stuff. I don't quite have that so we're working with what we got. This is me slightly in the future before we get to disassembling this 13B right here. I need to talk to you guys about today's video partner, which helps make these videos possible, Walmart. So I wanna give a huge shout out to today's channel partner, Walmart. If you guys didn't know, Walmart sells a lot of automotive accessories, OEM components, and more. Right now, Walmart is doing a rollback on tires of up to 45% off on Hankook, Firestone, Milestar, and Vercelli, but they also carry popular brands like Michelin, Cooper, and Goodyear. Now, if you guys didn't know, Walmart also has automotive centers that can help install those tires for you. They can do your oil changes, and they can also do battery installations and more. Now, personally, I've been eyeballing and JBL subwoofer that goes inside of the spare tire for quite some time and Walmart actually happens to have them on their site. These things are super cool. We'll be installing this in an upcoming video but this thing is super cool because it sits inside of the spare tire, doesn't compromise any room in your trunk and whatnot so we'll be doing a full install video on this guy here in the near future. They also have things like all of the speaker wire and amplifier wiring that you need and if you didn't know because I didn't know this, Walmart actually carries OEM components. Now one issue I've had with the WX for a while is the fuel tether for the gas cap is just broken. So it's actually really cool that Walmart actually sells OEM components. They have things like Subaru, Mazda, they might have some FDRX7 parts because you guys know I'll be needing those. OEM Subaru. Personally, I would have never guessed that. For the longest time we've always seen that Walmart sells X, Y, or Z items. They also have things like bumpers, aftermarket under the hood accessories, OEM components for body panels, gas caps, gaskets, lighting, you name it, they've got it. Now I won't lose my gas cap anymore. Now that stuff is just a small sample of what Walmart carries. They also have things like wheels, Anki, Rays, you name it, it is probably on their site. There will be more information down in the description below for you guys, but once again, huge shout out to today's video partner, Walmart. Now let's get back to today's video and keep working on these cars because it is a never ending cycle of maintenance and work to be done. And what you'll notice on rotaries is they actually have a thermostatic switch inside of the bolt and that controls, I believe it controls oil flow to the rotor housings and the rotors themselves. I could be wrong on that, but we've got that guy there. We've got, this is not the stationary gear. I think this is just the adapter for it. We have our E-shaft there. Look at that, man. I already know stuff about rotaries. Look at me go. Oh, wow. Yep, that smells like an old engine. Now oh, it should come right off. Just like that. Wow, dude, that's actually really clean inside the front cover. I'm actually surprised. We're gonna clean all this up like hardcore, so. We've got this gear here, which is for the oil metering pump, which is, we're deleting the oil metering pump because we're gonna be using premix, but this is what I was talking about, the chain for the oil pump. And the nice thing about it is, is there's no timing. So this piece will slide off. 
I feel like I should mark on this stuff like front and back. Future Tanner watching this video, keep in mind the F just means front of the engine. Oh yeah, you just send it, okay. So the nuts off, the bent washer is off. Set those aside. These gears kind of come off together. Boom, look at that. There's our oil pump gears, that's neat. There is a keyway. Make sure you don't lose the freaking keyways. I'm gonna set those in my bin also. There's a bigger keyway on the E-shaft, but uh, nope, that one definitely comes out also, so. Worry about that one in a minute. There it comes, there's the keyway. Here's our front counterweight. Like I said, I am not rebalancing the engine, so we're gonna keep everything counterweight wise as it is. Now on rotaries, from what I've learned, is you've got this little shim here, and this is for end play on the E-shaft, because you want some end play on this engine. So next up, we can take this guy off and pull out. This is the stationary gear, so we can go ahead and pull the stationary gear off also. Stationary gear bolts look like that with one washer. Oh, was I supposed to, oh, it's the oil pump. Oh, was I supposed to do that? That's gotta come off. Yeah, see the whole thing comes off, okay. No, no, we good, we good, we good. Oh, yep, there it goes. Okay, so there's the E-shaft. There's the other shim. So we have one shim behind the stationary gear plate. And then I'm pretty sure that this is just the stationary gear. Welcome to House of Weird Engine, where we've got flat engines, Dorito engines, with our 13B here. Matt and I went ahead and got our engine stand. This is a very weird engine to try to put on an engine stand because you can't go off of the bell housing like you would on an EJ, because on an EJ, you build the engine from the sides outward. On the Dorito, you build it from the bottom up. So it's a little odd, but we got it on there. You kind of have to go off. Of, I saw Rob Dom do it on one of his videos off of those two, those two spots. So I feel like a little okay about doing it right there. Next up, we need to get the flywheel off. Now, like I said earlier, I am not rebalancing this engine. We're not going to the extent of making that much sauce with this engine. I just want to rebuild it. So it's that way it's fun, reliable and whatnot. So there is a counterweight built into this and there's that front counterweight also. Now I also pulled off the stationary gear off the front before we put it on the engine stand. So that way this thing doesn't fall down. What the stationary gear does is, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. The E shaft goes into the stationary gear. The stationary gear is there to keep the rotor rotating around the stationary gear. So you've got one of, you've got, I believe one of these at the front and the back of the engine. So that way the rotors don't go flying around in there. But so the back nut on here is actually a 54 millimeter. So huge shout out to Kyle for giving us the socket with the engine. It's already been broken loose, so we can go ahead and just get that guy off, uh, and then get this flywheel off. Now, before we start disassembling the engine, I do need to get the oil pan off next, which it looks like it might be a little bent, so I might, maybe I'll buy a new oil pan for this thing. I don't know, we'll see the condition of everything once I get it all apart. Okay, I watched a video. This lady said, just hit it with a hammer, put the nut back on a couple threads, and just Wow, that worked. Now that we actually have access back here, I know all of these bolts are what hold the sandwich of Dorito power together. This is the other stationary gear, the rear stationary gear, so I'm pretty sure I can just pull that off right now, and then we can start disassembling all of these bolts to gain access to the rotors. So we've got rear stationary gear and... Dude, that is nasty. Say that loosely, as it doesn't want to come off. Release yourself, evil demon! Oh, there we go. That's a Dorito. That's not as rusty as I thought it would be. Dude, your Apex seals are still good, bro. Are they? The coolant seals aren't, because it's black. Everything's just black, dude. Side seals still look good. Apex seals are still there, so in theory, what is with all this like bubblegum candy rock stuff? Cool. You see that? It's like bubblegummed out. It's like candy. Then again, it's been in there 10 years, so. All right, let's pull out Dorito number one. I'm pretty sure I can just like grab it and yep, there it comes. Oh. Bearing on the rotor, I'll show you guys out here in a minute, but I mean, honestly, the rotors don't look too bad. I'm gonna try to clean them up a little bit before I show them to you guys, but even inside, the side seal fell out, but. Even inside, the housings don't look bad. They look old and dirty, but they don't look bad. Off next. Yeah, so rear rotor, or this is actual rotor housing, which looks 
salvageable, which is good because this was one of my biggest worries was these guys. And now we need to get the middle iron off. From what I've seen, I should be able to wiggle it around a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe not. Because I'm gonna have to lift up the E shaft here. Oh, here's one of the oil seals for the rotor. Probably set that in the bin right down here in the oil pan. Um, with this, I am going to have to lift up on the E shaft a little bit like that. And then once it's lifted up, I should be able to get this rotor housing off. Where is the dowel? There should be a locating dowel. Oh my gosh. All right, hold up. This is not how this is supposed to come apart, but it's how I got it. All the oil seals decided to stay behind for the most part. Yeah, see? Um, that would have been a bad idea to try to run this engine. As you guys can see, all the coolant, like, I don't want to say it coagulated, but it crystallized. So we've got the entire engine literally right here. This has been the easiest engine I have ever torn down, if we're being honest. So, oh, that's really cool that they label these on the irons, leading and trailing on the uh, on the actual irons. Or these aren't the irons, these are aluminum? These are the irons? I, I don't know. Regardless, really cool that they label leading and trailing for the spark plugs on here. So, uh, you've got your front iron, which houses like the oil pump, everything like that. You've got one stationary gear, gear there for this rotor. Now, the stationary gears bolt in place to the front and the rear irons, and those are what the rotor rotates around. So the E-shaft here, will spin and that's what spins the rotor and then causes it to go around the stationary gear so that way the rotor doesn't just go wherever it wants. Then you have a rotor housing, the center iron, rotor housing, rear iron. The rear iron also has a spot for a stationary gear back there. Uh, both of the rotors from what I see look in usable condition. I don't see any like scoring or anything like that. I have been pulling out like random springs and apex seals as they're all falling out and setting them over there. So what I want to do now is go through our engine here and start to clean off uh, as much of it as I can to get 10 years of oil, carbon, all of that crap off of here. So I think I'm just going to start from one end and work my way down to the other. So I'm going to set up a table and let's start cleaning all this up. I would like to clean out all these, get all the old side seals out, get all the old side springs out. Now with this engine, the failure on this engine was coolant seals. So you guys will see those orange seals there and then there's an outer one there that's black those are what typically tend to fail from my understanding oem mazda ones they overheat once they're done engine needs to be rebuilt and the coolant seals need to be replaced the atkins rotary ones i have withstand i want to say it's 150 degrees over what oem mazda does so that way if in the event the car pops a coolant hose off and it overheats a little bit uh, the engine's not going to need to be rebuilt like a uh, oem seal would so sweet Let's go ahead, set up a table, and uh, start running through and cleaning our rotors, our irons, and try to get this thing looking minty again. and kind of cleaned up one rotor i still have a ways to go on it but i got a decent amount of the carbon off got all the old seals out and everything like that so i've got this one just kind of set aside i've got it soaking and brake clean right now to get more of the crap off before we go through and start like getting all this old carbon off of this one we need to get all the seals out so from what i've learned there's a good amount of seals the oil seals have already fallen off those fell out on their own this is the rear rotor i've got that one labeled as the front rotor so you've got the oil control rings the oil seals which i can still see one of the oil control rings right here so we can pop that guy out side seals corner seals uh all the apex seals are out except for this one which is pretty gummed up in there and doesn't really want to come out now i can start fiddling with getting some of these seals out so i've been trying to get the uh the side seals out first i have broken one of them trying to get them out they are they've just sat in here for so long that they just don't really want to come out like that one came out all right and then underneath of that there is a spring which if I can get my knife down in here and grab the spring out of there. There's the spring. It's very tiny. Everything is very tiny on this. Dude, like some of these are just so stuck in the rotor. It's ridiculous. All right, so this side we're all freed up. I'm gonna check for side seal springs one more time. There's one right there. Right now I'm just trying to burn out any of the old oil that's kind of just left in the rotor. We're gonna have to press these old bearings out anyways out of these rotors for new ones. So I gotta order those, but kind of just burning off any old carbon, any oil that's seeped into the rotors, anything like that. 
we went through and we cleaned up the side seals. We did have one side seal get stuck and it, oh, it's on fire again. And uh, it did kind of mar the rotor a little bit, but we were able to sand it down and save the rotor. I was just gonna buy a new rotor and then I looked at the price of them and then Matt was like, we can sand it down and save it. So that's what we did. So back here, we've got rotor one, rotor two, all cleaned up. We've got the front iron cleaned up. I still have these two irons that I'm gonna do right now. Uh, the rotor housings are in our parts washer upstairs. So we'll grab those once they're done. So let's jump on these two and hopefully finish cleaning up the last of these guys. So that way our 13B is actually, so it's not like assembly ready clean, but it's like oil free, all the old gunk and everything off of them clean, if that makes sense. So let's knock out these last two and then hopefully be done cleaning everything up. We've got pretty much all of our 13B over here done and cleaned up for the most part. This is just preliminary cleaning on this stuff. Uh, I am gonna go through and Cerakote the irons and the rotary housings on these. I'm gonna see if I can find someone local to hot tank all this stuff for us, but we've got our rear rotor here, our front rotor here. Matt and I did get a side seal stuck. We didn't get it stuck. It was stuck in there from sitting for like 10 years, which is right down there. We, uh, we cleaned it up as much as possible. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. We were looking at buying new rotors. Um, new rotors are like $750 each and I don't want to spend $750 each on my first rotary build. So uh, plus this engine's not going to see a ton of horsepower. It's going to see maybe 350, 400 max. Totally fine. Running that side seal is still going to stick out farther than where that little nick is. We sanded it down and it is all smooth. There's just one spot that's got a little bit larger of a gap. So if anything, might just have a little bit of blow by right there. But anyways, dude, everything disassembled super easily. We have everything here. The stock bolts and oil pan are over here. I think I'm gonna get an aftermarket oil pan and we are studding the engine so we are not gonna be using those bolts anymore. Overall, I think for my first time disassembling a rotary and playing with a rotary, I know my face is dirty, I don't care. I think it was pretty smooth. Everything came apart pretty easily. There was the one part where the E-shaft didn't wanna come out of the other rotor housing. I still need to clean the E-shaft, but it's right there. At this point, we're just waiting for the rest of the stuff to come in to rebuild the engine now, which is going to be the dowels, the studs. I'm going to paint and Cerakote the engine to make it look nice. I'd like to hot tank it. Uh, we tried doing a DIY cleaning here, running it through our parts washer. It just didn't come out to the quality that I wanted. Not a big deal. I can find someone local. Though. What, do you want me to call it what it is? They're, they're not going to watch the video. Parts Matt and I ran our parts through the dishwasher thinking it would work. <laughs> it worked. It worked for your stuff. Didn't really work. I mean, it worked for the inside of the rotor housings on mine. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this one. I am starting to feel sick again, so I'm gonna go inside edit this video for tomorrow. Uh, kind of lay down, relax the rest of the night. So if I go MIA again, it's probably because the second wind of the sickness came back. But anyways, oh, and next Friday, we are going to be going live with the next apparel drop. One of the samples is boom right there. This is going to be the one where you can win that 500 wheel horsepower capable EJ25 with the built head package, the Kelford cams, the GSC valves, valve springs, retainers, all that good stuff. So if you guys want to get in on that, keep an eye out for it. It's gonna be the same rules as always, but I'll go into more details about that later. But anyways, if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go to hit that like button, turn black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you guys. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be, put one of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. But with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.